Okay, so let's get started. If you're still working on the feedback, we appreciate the in-depth feedback. Um, there's no rush, so just wait until um, the end of class, or you can even submit it in a couple days if you want. Um, we appreciate the feedback, though. Okay, so today's agenda, um, as you all know, there wasn't a quiz today, just course feedback number one. Um, and then today we're actually going to talk about JavaScript. So we're leaving HTML and CSS behind. And that's basically the reason why we wanted to do the course feedback now also. We're a little bit more than or close to halfway through with the course. And we're definitely move, moving on to more advanced topics. So before we kind of get started on that, we wanted to know your thoughts on the course right now. Um, if there's anything that we can improve in terms of the instructor's teaching or the material that we offer, just let us know. And it's not lim that's not limited to you know the course feedback uh, document that we just gave you. If you ever want to send us an email and let us know something, you know, please do. We, we'd really appreciate that also. Okay, so for announcements, uh, mini project number two, part one is due tonight by 11.59 p.m. And part one, if you don't already know, is a Photoshop uh, project and it just has you follow a, a YouTube video and basically create what you see in, the, in that video in Photoshop. And then part two is a continuation of that. It's gonna be due next week, also by 11.59 p.m. And it's just gonna have you cut up that uh, Photoshop mockup that you created for part one and create an HTML and CSS site out of it. So that should be interesting and it should basically wrap up um, all the knowledge that you've been acquiring from the last couple lectures. Um, and if you guys need help on the mini projects or anything, please No lecture. No, I just kidding. <laughs> uh, I have no. Oh, you have power. I don't have power. No. Okay. Wait, I'll try again. Okay. I'll try again? Yeah, I think it's good. It's just warm. Are you sure? I don't think you're allowed to. Yeah. Are we allowed to unplug a desktop to check them out? You should be able to. You should be able to do it on the side. Yeah, it's already filled up. Oh. Uh, are there central ones? Yeah. There's central ones. Not allowed. Just sit right here. Yeah, you should. Oh, I see. <laughs> Otherwise, bad things happen, like the class crashes. <laughs> so, you Okay, so, um, right, part one and part two. Part two is due next week, and it's gonna have you just cut up uh, what you've done in part one and create an HTML and CSS site, and that should really wrap up um, everything we've covered with HTML and CSS. Do you have a question? Sorry, um, what's the number for the role? For a lecture? Yeah. Um, I'd appreciate it if you just grab it later. It's in the slides, too, it's uploaded, so. Okay, um, right, so, mini project, so, I just wanted to bring up the final project. The final project is the last assignment that's going to be due. And it's actually going to be done in groups of two. So if you have someone in mind now, um, or if you're a friend in the class, you're welcome to ask them. The requirements from last semester were to have a website with at least three different pages that uses HTML, CSS, um, has a form element, and is kind of consistent from page to page. So if you use an external CSS file and you're just reapplying your styles, um, you should be able to accomplish most of that already. And actually, from what we've covered in the course, most of these requirements should already be satisfiable by you. So you shouldn't have to know too much more about what we're gonna teach to do a large part, part of the final project. Um, just a small disclaimer, the requirements are, are gonna change a little bit this semester because um, we're doing a two hour lecture instead of a one hour lecture. So we're actually covering more material and a little bit, and doing it more in depth. So it'll be a little bit more interesting. It might not be, you know, hopefully it won't be too much tougher, but it'll be a little bit more interesting. We'll have you do kind of more dynamic things. And uh, we'll post those requirements soon. So. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about JavaScript. So, so far with HTML and CSS, we basically looked at static pages. And by static pages, I mean pages that don't really change after they've been loaded. So once they're loaded, they're, it's, it's the same content, and uh, depending on, on who loads it or you know how long they wait in front of that page, it never changes. Um, what we're going to look at now is dynamic pages. 
And dynamic change pages um, are basically going to involve JavaScript or some kind of uh, uh, server-side language like PHP. And with dynamic pages, the difference with static pages is that that content can actually change after it's been loaded. So something might appear on your screen, or as you change something on that page, you know, you might get feedback either in the form of some kind of alert box or um, you know something else. The next criteria for being a dynamic page um, is that the page can actually change depending on who's trying to access it. So the example of that is if you've been to Facebook, um, depending on you know if you own that profile that you're looking at or if you're just a friend of that person, or even if you're a stranger, that same page is going to be served differently to you. So what do I mean by changing after the page has been loaded? Well, um, the two examples that you should be pretty familiar with, um, the web design detail site has basically clouds and fishes that change after they've, they've uh, been loaded. So the images have been loaded, and you can actually see the fishes still moving around after everything's done. Same thing with the clouds and the water. Um, and with Google, if you type in uh, something now, you'll see that the, the first page I was on actually redirected me. And as I type things in, um, the results change. So this is what we mean by basically a dynamic page, and a page that loads or that changes after it's been loaded. And the other version of that is basically a page that's rendered differently depending on who is viewing it. So the most um, clear or the most common example of that is depending on the user that's viewing a particular page. You know, if you're logged in or if you're not logged in, that page can either be hidden or the content could be could be changed. Um, in the, in the case of Facebook, what happens is if you actually own that profile, you can remove comments or edit it. Um, and if you aren't friends with that person, you can only kind of see like a very limited view of that page. So are there any questions about just kind of what we mean by dynamic pages? It's pretty straightforward. Alex, you haven't, you haven't written something about yourself. I haven't what? You haven't written something about yourself. I haven't written something about myself. I'll <laughs> try and do it some other time. <laughs> Oops, that shouldn't be there. <laughs> okay, um, well anyways. So JavaScript allows us to do one of those two things with a dynamic page. Um, which one do you guys think it is? Does it allow us to change pages after it's been loaded? Or does it allow us to present pages differently depending on who's uh, requesting it? And the answer is um, change after it's been loaded. My transitions are messed up. OK, anyways, um, so what is JavaScript? Well, we talked a little bit about the client side and the service side. And we know uh, the general work, uh, general relationship between the client side and server side in terms of HTML files and CSS files. And basically, that's the server will send the HTML, the HTML file and the CSS file to the, to the client. And uh, the client's browser is going to interpret that and render the page out. With, H, with, C, uh, with JavaScript, it's basically the same thing. The server is written in a file somewhere on the, um, sorry, JavaScript is written on the, in a file on the server somewhere. And when you actually go and load an HTML file, um, the HTML file will have a reference to that JavaScript file. And then the server, the browser will see that and it'll ask the server for the JavaScript file. And the server will send the JavaScript code to the client, to your browser. And your browser will actually execute the JavaScript code there. So. The JavaScript code runs entirely on the client in your browser, and it never runs before that before that time. So um, the answer is here again. But you know, given given the fact that JavaScript only runs on the client side, you know, why can't JavaScript serve a different page depending on the request? And the reason why I can't do that is just because JavaScript isn't even run until it reaches your computer. So uh, without something like PHP and MySQL, if you were to visit a page. Um, that page would always be identical, depending on no, no matter who you are accessing it, it'd always be the same um, without without PHP and MySQL. Well, with PHP, uh, we're actually going to talk about this later, but with PHP, you'll be able to keep track of who's trying to access the page, depending on who's logged in, and then you can actually write pages dynamically and decide what should be part of that page and what shouldn't be, depending on you know access rules, um, account privileges, things like that. Okay, so here is an example of that of um, the JavaScript file being loaded after the HTML file is loaded and running on the client side. So we're just visiting the DCAP website, and you'll see that after the first HTML file is loaded, this is the HTML file. Um, the CSS file is loaded, and the JavaScript file is loaded. 
And similarly, the way that you actually indicate which JavaScript file to load, um, it's basically the same syntax as CSS. It's a little bit different, but it's doing essentially the same thing. You can either put your JavaScript file or JavaScript code in a separate file, and you can put this line of code inside the head section of your documents. And then when the HTML file is actually read and parsed, uh, your browser will notice that it needs to go and grab this file or go to the server and grab it. You could also actually just write your JavaScript uh, in line in, your, in the head of your document. I think even in the body of your JavaScript. Um, but of course, you know, there's trade-offs for that. And if you're reusing a JavaScript file, it's kind of better to link it externally instead of actually writing it just in one HTML file. Um, just for reuses, and it's, it's almost exactly the same thing for a CSS. For the it's exactly the same reason why we wanted to link uh, CSS files externally. And the makeup of the JavaScript file and the CSS file, or what differentiates them, uh, besides the syntax of the code that you're going to put in them, is just the extension, so .js instead of .css. Otherwise, they're just both plain text files also. Are there any questions about that? So just to confirm, like, the best practice would be to have all your JavaScript in a separate, a separate document. Yeah, exactly. So, um, exactly. So you want to have your your JavaScript code and your CSS code in separate documents, just in case you reuse them. You're not, you know, re-downloading the exact same code over and over again. And what will happen is actually, and you can kind of see this here, when your browser has uh, previously accessed a file, it'll actually keep a copy of that around in case you need it again or you request it again. And if it already had it and it didn't change, it actually won't download it again. So that's why you want to keep it in a separate file. If you kept it in an HTML file um, and you include the JS, the JavaScript, uh, every single time, then you're, you'd, be re you'd be reloading that, that code uh, every single time you get a new HTML file. How would it know if the file has changed or not? Uh, the server, I believe, actually keeps track of that. And some kind of magic. So it's based on when you last visited? Yeah, I think. Um, well, like on your on your on your computer, um, it actually keeps track of kind of when you last modify a file. So I'm assuming that the server is probably doing something like that. It's saying, um, you know, you requested this file however long ago, and then it looks at the timestamp on the file and it says, well, that that file actually hasn't changed, um, and then I'll just say I'll just say it hasn't changed instead of actually sending the file again. So when I say whenever I use the term magic, it just means um, it's not really in the scope of the course. But. <laughs> I wish you were magic. It'd make it, it definitely make it more interesting. Okay, so uh, what is JavaScript? JavaScript itself is a programming language, and it's an object-oriented programming language. Um, the difference between it and other object-oriented programming languages is that it's actually not based on classes. It's based on um, it's prototype-based, and it doesn't really mean too much. Um, or we're not. It's it's again, it's outside the scope of the course. But it's just there are no classes in JavaScript. What you kind of do is you create um, objects and you duplicate them and you kind of change them around, but it's just not kind of what you're used to with Java. And if you don't come from a programming background, don't even worry about this. This is just kind of a background on JavaScript for those of you that have experience with Java. Um, this is a tidbit of information. JavaScript, although it has Java in its name, has actually nothing to do with Java itself. They just kind of, when they created it, I think Java was kind of being the hot thing at the time, so they just added it in the name for whatever reason. Um, so there's actually a little bit of difference between a JavaScript and HTML and CSS, and we stressed this in a couple lectures before, and that's that HTML and CSS is actually a markup language. So it's not a programming language. Um, you can't write functions, and it doesn't, HTML and CSS doesn't really have a function except um, basically declaring what should be in a file and how, that, how the contents of that file should look. So it's declarative and nothing actually runs. JavaScript is a, basically a programming language, so um, you can have things created that weren't there initially, and you can actually execute code, and it'll, it'll actually compute something for you. So there's some kind of state. And the analogy that I'm going to be using uh, in this lecture, or actually just next, the next couple slides, is uh, a kid playing with 